So if I buy a mobile home park like this one, this 17 unit park, I'll buy it for 60. I'll pay a higher interest rate on the purchase. I'll stabilize it. That thing will be worth 400,000 when I'm done with it at least or 500,000. I'll refinance it at say 70%, which is easy. Um, that's 240,000. I'll pay back my 60. I'll be left with $180,000 in my pocket. I'll take that 180 and I'll go buy something else. Welcome to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owner Association, providing benefits and services to real estate investors and rental property owners for over 48 years. With your host, Brian Hamrick from Hamrick Investment Group. This episode is sponsored by Green Property Management, managing everything from single-family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area. Find out more at greenpropertymgt.com. And Mike Murphy at J.B. Harrison Insurance, helping real estate investors to understand and choose their best options for all their insurance needs. Call 616-868-0050 or email mikem at jbhins.com. Hello and welcome to episode 158. Today, we're going to be talking about mobile home investing, and my guest, Marco Kozlowski, believes that mobile home investing is the fastest and best way to achieve success in real estate in today's market. Marco is a leading expert in mobile home and real estate investing, and he's also the owner of a variety of successful companies in multiple countries. Marco will also be a featured speaker at the Michigan Landlord and Real Estate Investor Free Conference and Expo, which is happening right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan on February 21st through 23rd of 2019. And you can go to rpoaonline.org to register for free. Marco, thanks for being on the show. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, right now, there are video cameras taping you because you're making a documentary about yourself. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, well, I'm really not that cool. Um, you can ask both my ex-wives; they'll probably concur. But uh, I've been uh, been at the game since uh, 1999, and I call it a game because I try to make it as fun as possible. Everything I do, I try to uh, enjoy. If I don't like it, I tend to not do it or delegate it. And uh, I was a concert pianist. That's my background. I was a, a musician, and uh, it was really tough making money in uh, in, uh, in in music. And uh, I don't know if you, um, you know, were ever married or are married now. I, we don't know each other that well. But uh, I was married very young, married at 18, four kids at 24. And I don't know if you know what the uh, the number one cause of divorce is. Who are <laughs> is it children? <laughs> yeah, it's actually marriage. Um. Uh, the, the, the second was uh, is financial problems. And when you're making $10,000 a year, I have four kids and uh, try to make ends meet. It was it was extremely stressful and uh, sadly uh, uh, through financial problems, uh, my ex-wife uh, and I are still actually very good friends. She's been remarried. I was in her marriage, uh, in her wedding, and not in her marriage, but in her wedding. And um, you know, she's uh, she's a great girl, but just not for me. So I, I had to figure out how to uh, continue to be a stay-at-home dad, which is what I was. Uh, spend as much time with my family as possible. And uh, the only vehicle I could think of doing that uh, because I saw an infomercial was actually real estate. And I uh, started going to seminars. Uh, first one I went to was terrible, but I met someone that uh, sort of pointed me in the right direction here and there. Uh, went to the School of Hard Knocks for a long time and carved out a few niches for myself. Uh, I, I did luxury home flipping for a long time. Uh, then I went into multifamily, uh, mobile home parks, uh, and uh, actively buying hotels as well. I, uh, t this month alone, we were doing about $40 million in hotel ac acquisitions. So uh, I'm very active in the hotel acquisition side, the mobile home parks. I have a few thousand units in mobile homes across the country. And uh, so I, I know the business quite well. Go back to the, the infomercial. Who was it? Uh, it was a Ron Legrand infomercial. Uh, and uh, that's really what got me into it because it made sense. You know, if uh, all you need is, a, is, is to learn how if you have a skill set and you apply that new skill set and you have the right tools and understanding of something, anyone can do this. And if you're listening to this podcast right now, it's just application. There's, I have no magic powers at all. Uh, I've, been, I've been actually teaching and empowering people to learn new skills uh, for quite some time now. And it's really neat to see and kind of what drives me now because I don't really – need to buy more real estate. My, my passive income is pretty substantial, uh, which is really what I focus on. I don't like doing fix and flips necessarily. I know it's very, you know, it's a great way to start for sure. And I think everyone should, you know, uh, definitely master as many uh, sides of real estate as possible. But the challenge with, in my opinion, with fix and flips is 
you know, you work once, you get paid once, and then you got to go eat again. You got to keep doing it. And it's feast or famine, feast or famine. You're always looking for the next deal. And uh, it's very time consuming. Whereas in mobile home parks, uh, you buy it once and it pays you every month forever. And um, it's, you know, it's it's a fabulous way to go. Um, you know. Yeah. And I, and I want to get into the, the mobile home parks. I want to talk about that. But tell, tell us about this documentary you're making. I mean, you got a, you got a crew travel, traveling with I you. Do. I do. have a... Deals. I have a camera pointed at me right now. Um, I'm, I'm, dr- I'm driving from uh, Orlando, where I live, to uh, Jessup, Georgia. And uh, we're basically documenting uh, every, every deal I'm doing and uh, the people that I'm helping and seeing some, uh, some of my uh, students' journey. Uh, I have a, not only do I do real estate, I also teach real estate. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, being at your event uh, in uh, February and empowering those that want to learn how to do something different, uh, giving them the skill sets that they need in order to do that. And uh, they're basically following me around. I I was in um, Stockholm uh, when we started. Um, I'm looking at him going, is that where we started? I think it was in Stockholm. Uh, I went to Stockholm, empowered some people there. They bought property from Stockholm because I'm a big believer in doing everything from your laptop. From there, we went to a hotel closing in um, in Texas. That thing, that sucker made eight. It makes eight hundred thousand dollars a year passive income. Uh, that's triple net, like in your in your pocket, everything eight hundred thousand. Nice. Uh, we scooped that up for uh, four million, so it's twenty uh, percent return, which is great. Um, and then um, then from there, we went to Vegas, did a class in Las Vegas, and uh, now I'm on my way to actually from Vegas. I went to South Dakota. And uh, we, I looked at uh, a, a lady, sadly, uh, her husband passed away of cancer, and uh, she has uh, over $30 million in property um, that she just doesn't know how to manage well. So we scooped that up for about $9 bucks. Wow. Um, yeah. So there's the, uh, And you're getting it all on camera. All on camera. So they're just following me around, and, that's, and they're seeing everything that we do in real time. So... Um, you know, from raising money to because uh, I don't use my own money to buy property at all. I use OPM, and uh, you know why use your own money if you don't have to? It's better to leverage someone else's money, get them a great return, great interest rates, and uh, everyone wins. They're, someone that's lending the money makes a nice high return. I get the asset, and everyone wins. Now let's talk about mobile home investing. Sure. You've definitely done a lot of different asset classes. Uh, what is it you like about mobile home investing? And give us sort of the basic 101 perspective of mobile home investing. The beauty of mobile home investing is uh, returns are pretty stupid uh, that, uh, in a good way. Uh, you know, you can buy a, a mobile, a used mobile home for around 10 grand, uh, 10 to 15,000. That you can rent out for, depending on where in the country, anywhere between seven hundred and a thousand dollars a month. So, if you think about those numbers, um, I don't know where you can buy an asset that basically pays itself off in two years uh, anywhere. And if you have a park, so you have a whole bunch of those, and uh, it's just no ridiculous returns. And uh, there are mobile home parks everywhere. There are thousands of them across the country, and uh, it's just a matter of knowing uh, uh, you know, what to get into, what not to get into, because there are very specific things in the mobile home park investing business that you want to stay away from. There are some big booby traps if you don't know what you're doing. I learned that the hard way. Um, I didn't really, I, I, I'm a big believer in mentorship, finding someone that really knows what they're doing and right on their coattails, pay them whatever they need to, whatever they're asking, uh, as long as it, you know, it, the returns are there. And um, and learn so you're not, you're not making the mistakes yourself because uh, for five years I bought mobile home parks and I lost my ass uh, just made a ton of mistakes and uh, not you know not understanding uh, location of a mobile home park is important uh, how many spaces is important um, who pays the water who pays the power uh, how is it managed there's a lot of moving parts and if you understand um, you know the the do's and the don'ts and what you can do and shouldn't do um, you're going to make a ton of money in the business. Well, what are some of the differences between investing in mobile home parks? Um, and it sounds like you also invest in, in individual mobile home units too. But what are some of the differences between that and other types of residential? So in a single family, you have you know one uh, – first of all, the construction is completely different. A mobile home park is plastic and wood. Um 
the and the, uh, there you have one tenant generally in a mobile home. Uh, sorry, in a uh, in a single family, whereas in a mobile home park you have obviously multiple tenants. The kind of person is also different. Um, you have a the I like affordable housing. Um, if the market collapses, which it will again, you know it's it's going to happen. It happens every eight to twelve years. Uh, and when people are uh, losing their homes or losing their jobs, they need to find affordable housing. And it's you can't live cheaper than in a mobile home park. Uh, you know you can pay 700 bucks a month and have a uh, and have you know grass. So that doesn't you can't usually do that in most parts of the country. Or in some cases it's 400 dollars a month. Or they own their their trailer and they're renting a lot space. So you're basically charging for like a parking lot. You're, they're, they're paying every month just for the ability to leave their mobile home park there. And that's the best kind of business because then you're not maintaining. The mobile home, which is very inexpensive to maintain, um, depending on the year or how old it is. Just like any real estate, the older it is, the, the more maintenance there is. Um, but uh, if you have the right um, mobile home uh, and the right tenant, uh, there's not a lot of work that needs to be done. So, and it's also very cheap to uh, you know to, to to fix up. So, um, said a lot of things in a short period of time. But the biggest difference really is cash flow. Uh, and uh, the 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 hands off. I'm a big hands off guy, so I don't you know I have thousands of units across the country. I don't want to manage anything. I'm not, I don't self manage any of my assets or properties. I can't. I wouldn't have time to enjoy my life. I don't want Jerry Springer tenants calling me in the middle of the night telling me to fix my damn toilet. Uh, not going to happen. I'd, I'd rather shoot myself in the head uh, twice. If that's even possible. So but, do, does that mean you you hire uh, third party professional management? Well, all the time, 100%. So we we uh, we 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 have a professional management company that uh, that takes care of it. That's local. Uh, we vet um, three or four or five different management companies uh, um, to you know to, to see who's going to be the best one specifically that's mobile home park friendly. And uh, you know they collect rents, they evict people. Um, you know they it's it's basically the same thing as having a multi uh, as a single family um, asset. But instead of having one rent check, you have 20, 30, 40 rent checks um, per month, which is way better. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about Green Property Management. Not only do they manage everything from single family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area, they also manage my entire portfolio. So I can tell you from personal experience that their unique flat fee management style is worth a closer look. If you feel that your property isn't operating to its fullest potential, then Green Property Management can help you take a holistic approach that will save you money, eliminate your headaches, and increase your net income. And if you're a property Property manager interested in applying Green Property Management's model, give them a call at 1-866-95-GREEN or visit them on the web at greenpropertymgt.com. Just compare the numbers uh, between mobile home investing because you talk about how good the cash flow is. Uh, how, how does it compare to residential or other types of residential? Well, let's say you're, you're in Grand Rapids. Yes. All right. So what's the average... Uh, how much does the what's the average tenant pay? Uh, obviously, location matters, but what what can you get in Grand Rapids rent wise for a property? Well, in a, a B minus C type property, yeah. you might yeah. get six hundred for a one bedroom. Uh, two bedroom could be eight fifty ish. A three bedroom uh, nine hundred to a thousand. This this would be for more of a C type property. Understand? Okay. So if I had a mobile home park in uh, Grand Rapids, I, I have to go into my. Uh, I, we have quite a few parks in Michigan. I just don't know how far from Grand Rapids they are. I should have done that research before this call. But uh, um, the average mobile, you probably get about five fifty six hundred um, per for a, for a you know for a basic uh, two bedroom mobile home. And if you have uh, twenty units, uh, you know that's twelve thousand dollars a month coming in. Uh, and you know, and that's what about an two acres, uh, maybe an acre and a half uh, of space. So you're you have land that you have to mow. You get six hundred dollars a month. Um, they're responsible for their own uh, basically utilities, and uh, you keep you know you keep most of it. Um, you have management costs. Your taxes are quite low. Uh, insurance is actually quite low. That's something that also scares people because as you know. 
tornadoes look for mobile home parks. That's what they look for. Mm-hmm. You know, it's true. It's, 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 you know, yeah, whenever you see a tornado, it's the mobile home park was destroyed. But, you know, I've had multiple tornadoes hit my mobile home parks. Um, touch wood, thank goodness, no one was ever injured. And uh, when that happens, you know, the insurance company pays for new mobile home uh, units, which means we can increase rents and uh, do quite well. So, so yeah, your, your, your net on a property that has about 20 spaces would be about $86,000 a year. Now, I don't buy property unless I'm making at least a 15% return. So I would say five, I'd say 550, 570, 575 would be about what I pay for an asset that's, that makes me that kind of money. So your cash flow per what you're spending is just stupid, way better. Well, and it really seems like the, the cash flow is coming more from the lack of expenses because you, you, um, Correct me if I'm wrong, but it sounds like with the mobile home investing, you're not buying necessarily buying the mobile home units themselves. You're buying the land that goes underneath them. So your expense ratio is a lot lower because you don't have the maintenance costs and the utility costs uh, of of running those those units themselves, the physical units. You're just renting the land, basically. Well, you're renting the land, and if I do own the units, then I, 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 um, I do an owner financing deal with the tenant where I'm not responsible to take care of the maintenance of the property, So they're, and they have a pride of ownership. So I do a hybrid of you rent the land, and then you get to own the trailer after a certain amount of time. So I'm buying a trailer for X, and then they're, they're responsible for making timely payments on their trailer, and eventually we'll just uh, lease the land. So I have no maintenance cost on the actual trailer. And uh, they have to rent the land no matter what. And it's like a parking lot. So you, like I said, it's taxes, insurance, and management, and there's very little maintenance costs. So yes, compared to apartments, you don't have that. Um, you know, the, And the taxes are way lower on land than they would be on an apartment complex. So um, it's, it's a, it's, you, you get to keep a lot more than you would normally. Probably your expense ratio is less than 30%. Yeah, uh, yeah I was going to ask you that because in, in residential, your typical expense ratio is 50%. Yeah. You know, yeah. Depending on the age of the property, it could be more, could be less, yeah. but say 50%. You're looking at a 30% expense ratio in mobile home parking. That makes a big difference. Huge. Yeah, Huge. it's also you, you, less, less management intensive. It, it, well, it, it depends on the park and depends on what you choose your tenants because – You've got some mobile home parks that are like, you know, people are, you know, the toothless and the homeless, semi-homeless, where, uh, you know, if you're if you're not careful, there could be drug problems, uh, you know, uh, shootings. Uh, it could, there could be a lot of drama as well, uh, and that comes down to really picking your tenants properly. So that's one thing we do when we first buy a property. Uh, you know, we rescreen all the tenants that are there um, and uh, make sure that we have the right quality tenant. Because if you have a good good tenant park very low maintenance very low drama very low turnaround very high profit and if you aren't careful then you have you know the you got a pretty smile with all them teeth kind of people uh and uh you know they're just yeah it's it can be really jerry springer-ish and we don't want that with kids running around with no underwear uh dogs that are you know dog fighting all that stuff so it can be very 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 scary if if you're not careful when it comes to rental property insurance understanding the costs choices and benefits can be overwhelming and finding the right insurance provider can be frustrating i had one company cancel five of my policies all at once for no good reason and that's why i'm happy to have mike murphy from jb harrison insurance on my team mike is an independent agent who has always been able to find the right policy and the best provider for my my insurance needs. Over the past five years, Mike has not only become my go-to insurance agent, he's also helped me manage risk, add value, and save money. If you are looking for insurance on a new acquisition, or you believe it's time to get a more comprehensive look at your entire portfolio, then Mike Murphy is the independent agent to call for all your insurance needs, auto, home, and business at 616-868-0050 or email mikem at jbhins.com. Do you avoid those communities then, or do you see no, that as an opportunity where you can oh, come yeah. in and turn them around? Oh, that's that's the fun. The fun is taking something that no one else is going to touch, just like in single family, you know, or even apartments. You know, you uh, it's value add. You, you, you and someone that doesn't know how to manage or they're overwhelmed, uh, they just don't know how to deal with that cl- that kind of tenant. Uh, if you're dealing with a C minus D plus kind of tenant, um, it can be pretty scary. Then there's uh, you know HUD tenants, which are some people hate HUD. I love Section 8 uh, voucher program. 
fabulous. Uh, you know, there's Hudvash as well, where you know you can get some t uh, VAs in there, and um, you know there's some really cool things that you can do um, with um, when you understand where your tenant base is coming from. So kind of cool stuff. I have uh, some tenant, some some mobile. I have one mobile home park that is for sexual predators only. Um, that, you know, it's very difficult as a sexual predator to live anywhere because you can't go near a school, you can't go near anywhere. So you're basically an outcast, which I understand you're a sexual predator, but they need to live somewhere and there's a list of them. It's very easy to find because they have to register. And, um, so if you have a mobile home park, that's out of the area, out of the way, you know, there's an opportunity for everyone to live in the same place, which the community appreciates because they know that's where people go. But there's also an opportunity to charge more because they have nowhere else to go. So uh, we can get a 20% premium in that park that we would normally get for market rents. So there's there's a lot of neat things that you can do if you think outside the box in in this kind of um, asset class as well. So let's talk about what you look for then. Uh, you talked about in the beginning, the first five years of mobile home investing, you made a lot of mistakes. Really? Um, what were some of those mistakes? What did you learn from them? Uh, that you take forward in uh, acquiring new properties? Um, location, condition, if the mobile, like a mobile home park is a, uh, sorry, a mobile home is a car. So if you're, uh, it's got a VIN number and if you have a car that's old, it, you know, obviously it breaks down a lot and it's high maintenance. And if you are in the maintenance business of mobile homes, you're going to, your profits is going to be chewed up and just taking care of these old units that are rotting away um, you know, that have just are in terrible condition. So uh, not understanding the importance of um, the age uh, and how well they're maintained, uh, the quality of the tenants, who pays water, extremely important because a water bill can eat, uh, eat you alive. I've, uh, you know, I've, I've had parks where the, the tenants just leave the water on all the time. And if the tenants are paying for water, you know, they're, they're just not going to appreciate it. So making sure that I'm not responsible for the water bill, uh, making sure it's individually metered. Um, and if it's not metered, how to get it converted. So, so it is. So, um, no, so really age location, how close a Walmart is to, uh, to this, this is, you know, it sounds silly, but if, the, if there's not a Walmart, that's fairly close, uh, people are not going to want to live there. So, uh, the closest Walmart uh, question is actually a very important one when I'm first buying, because if it is too far away from 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 a Walmart, they're just not going to uh, just not going to want to move in. How, move how in. close do you need to be? Um, I'd say within a uh, I'd say a couple three miles. Like between two and six miles is 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 good. Anything past that, it's harder for people to get to. Um, funnily enough, it's it's an epicenter of where people want to live. And uh, if you have a Walmart that's fairly close, it's it's you know or you know in certain states it's the Piggly Wiggly. You know they have different things in different parts of the country that are important. I think that's Piggly, hilarious. Wiggly, the Piggly Wiggly. Like, <laughs> it's like giggity, giggity, the Piggly Wiggly. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah, but it's it's very much like a Walmart. So, uh, you know, or, you know, Target is not a, it's 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 literally Walmart or Piggly Wiggly. If, if you're in the deep south, that's what that is. What what are some of the other things that you need to see if you're going to be uh, taking uh, management, part seriously? If, management is extremely important. If I can't find good management, I don't buy it. Um, I need at least three property managers that I can uh, choose and pick from. Um, making sure you have the right, because uh, if I'm buying a park and there's terrible management um, or people are paying cash, that's another big deal. Um, you know, some people love cash. I hate it, especially as you have more units. Uh, it's really hard to manage cash. And it's actually dangerous, too, because if someone's collecting the cash and they get mugged and they know it's the first or the third of the month and you get break-ins, so we don't. We were a cashless operation. Everyone has to do uh, a cashier's check or a uh, a. Um, they don't have cashier's checks. They're uh, what are they called? Um, money orders. Money orders. Yeah, sorry. That's I don't know what's going on with my brain today. Um, but uh, basically, as soon as they have a money order, uh, they're good. Or they can go uh, because the Walmart's so close. The software we use for management, they can actually pay the rent at Walmart um, okay. and uh, go straight into our system immediately. So. Um, that's you another, can, you can get them to pay their rent at Walmart. Yep. That that's like at, at a bank at Walmart. I mean, it does, how is Walmart set up to collect? They have, rent? Uh, they have a uh, Western union and it goes through Western union. Um, and it goes straight into our system of, uh, our management software management system. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right. 
Um, well, let's, let's talk about opportunity and barriers to entry. Um, yeah, can anyone just go and and basically build a new mobile home park? Build one? No. Um, most communities. Well, let me rephrase that. It depends where you want to build it. So if you're in, a, in the county um, where there are no rules or restrictions, you can probably build one from scratch. Um, with inf- you're just going to need infrastructure. You know, water, sewer, uh, and power and lots. So that's that's your your basic uh, you know the basic stuff. <clears throat> I don't know what the cost would be to build a new one. I've never built a new one before. Uh, it's like I just picked one up, picked uh, a 17 unit mobile home park um, this weekend. It's only 17 units. It's pr- pretty small uh, for sixty thousand dollars. All right, 17 units for 60 grand. Um, and the average rate in that would be 500 bucks. I, if you do the math, it's like a, it's like an 80% cash on cash return. It's just stupid. Yeah, that's um, phenomenal. Yeah, it's, it's just stupid. So it's, I couldn't build it for that much. Um, I couldn't buy the units for that much. Um, and, you know, there's, uh, if you understand where to find these, you, you know, those opportunities are, I won't say everywhere, but there, there, there are enough of them where anyone, if they know where to look, what to ask for, and what to do, can basically mirror those results. Um, like I said, I don't have a secret power. I just follow a process. I'm very process oriented. Uh, and at first, when I started, I was just throwing a lot of noodles to the wall and you know trying to figure out what stuck. But now I, 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 I'm, I have a saying which is be married to the, um, be married to the process, divorced from the result, which is. If you follow the process over and over again, you're eventually going to get the result because it happens by itself. So uh, as far as barriers to entry, as long as you know what you're doing, um, you don't violate the, the, you know, a series of rules that I've put together um, based on, you know, just not losing my rear end because uh, you can buy a mobile home park and, and never make any money. Uh, if you're the one paying for water, if you're maintaining, if you have bad tenants and bad management, you're screwed. Like you're never going to make any money. It's going to be very hard for you to turn a profit. And you'll be very, very uh, stressed every month uh, trying to make the bills, um, you know, because no, you're just not collecting and and getting rid of people. And some of these tenants in mobile homes are professional tenants. They really know how to milk the system where they never get evicted. Um, some people are extremely good, and I'm, I'm sure if you're in the apartment building, you've business, you've run across this as well. They're extremely. They know the law better than you do. And uh, they understand what to do and what to say and what not to say. So, um, but if you background check them enough, you're you're going to be fine. So, as far as those two questions go, uh, if you know what to look for, know what to say, what to do, you can get in, and you don't need a lot of cash either. Um, there's you know there there are ways of getting finance from mobile home parks that are that are uh, pretty. There's tons of there's a few lenders out there that will um, that will that will lend. And uh, my strategy is always I buy. Uh, as quick as I can using uh, bridge bridge loans at higher interest rates, uh, stabilize it, and then refinance, pull a whole bunch of cash out, and go buy more. So I'm I've always I've, I'm a big long term thinker guy. So if I buy a mobile home park like this one, the six, seventeen the seventeen unit park, I'll buy it for sixty. Um, I'll pay a higher interest rate on the purchase. I'll stabilize it, and you know when I pull it out, it, that thing will be worth four hundred thousand when I'm done with it at least, or five hundred thousand. Uh, I'll refinance it at 80%, 70%, let's say, say 70%, which is easy. Um, that's 240,000. I'll, you know, I'll pay back my 60. I'll be left with $180,000 in my pocket. I'll take that 180 and I'll go buy something else. And I'll just keep doing that over and over and over and over again. Well, it, it sounds like you, you keep finding these opportunities. Uh, what, uh, where do these opportunities exist? Are, are, are you buying mostly from mom and pop type owners? Are you buying from the big companies that are, are doing this? I mean, wh- where are these opportunities? Um, I, honestly, there's, they're everywhere. Um, there's tons of websites. So there's a, you know, if you just Google, I want to buy a mobile home park, um, there's tons of sites out there that'll, that'll have them. Um, and it's just a matter of, uh, you know, I, I, it's going to be hard on this podcast to say here, this is exactly where you look because I have a hundred ways of finding a deal. I don't have one way of finding a hundred deals, if that makes any sense. Mm-hmm. So it's very, uh, you know, it's, it's, I have a very broad approach and I have a lot of lines in the water all the time. And I don't know which marketing source or which, uh, which feeder is going to, you know, land me a fish, but they all work eventually. 
And uh, I don't spend any money on marketing at all. That's something I, I do want to say is I'm many people spend a ton of money on marketing. Uh, I'm, I do everything online. Everything is uh, completely online. So I'm looking online and sending emails online to people that are uh, have a most likelihood of wanting to sell a property at a discount. And uh, I make a lot of offers. In fact, I probably make we make a, probably 100 offers a day. Uh, and an offer is not necessarily in writing with, a, you know, an actual contract. It's more of an email soft offer, which is free and it doesn't take a lot of time. So uh, and then I expect everyone to say no to my offer because if they say yes, I obviously offer too much. So I'm <laughs> al always looking for no's when I'm making offers. Always. Uh, so are you making unsolicited offers then on, on any community or are you uh, looking for people who are actually selling? No, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for people that are selling or have had it for sale within a certain amount of time. Um, and, and I would assume that when you come to speak at the conference, you'll be sharing some of those techniques. Oh, yeah. I don't want to give away the farm just yet. You have to come, <laughs> you gotta, you gotta come, to, come here, hear Marco speak to, to learn yeah. these, these techniques. Yeah. Um, you got any uh, uh, horror stories for us? Any mobile home investing horror stories where things Absol just Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, uh, I've had people get shot. Um, I've had uh, one person uh, burnt down a few units because uh, they had to pay rent. So they went around and destroyed a couple of units. Um, I had one where the the, uh, the water company had made a mistake on uh, – this is my earlier – where the water company had made a mistake on uh, the water uh, the water bill, and we owe them $2 million in backwater. $2 million oh in back. Gosh. And I'm like, there's no, and so we, we went to court and, uh, they, they, they forgave the $2 million, but what they did is they increased the water bill rate. So it was almost $20,000 a month. We, and there's no way the, the, the park could support it. So we ended up losing the park over, uh, a water bill that the, the water company basically just wanted to shut us down at that point. They were so pissed off at us. So, wow. um, yeah. So if you're dealing with, uh, Small, small, very small minded um, in s small communities that are very rural um, that really don't want a mobile home park in the area. That's something that's very important to uh, to stay away from. And there's a couple questions that you can ask to, to make sure that that's not going to happen. But uh, that, that's probably the worst thing that ever happened is having my park shut down over the water company jacking up the water bill to something that was so ridiculous that there's no way I could keep it open. Yeah, that, that's just an impossible situation. Yeah, and that's why I don't want to be responsible for paying water um, because water is not cheap. And when a tenant wants to open up a swimming pool in their backyard, um, you know, it's it, it can be it, it's not cheap. So I, I assume that you have a checklist that you look at uh, every time you buy one of these communities. Just like a pilot, before they take off, I have the exact same kind of checklist. And I double, triple, quadruple check it. And I actually have a team member that also verifies to make sure that we're not doing things incorrectly. So I have double, triple, quadruple redundancies uh, whenever I buy anything. Yeah, And you mentioned your process uh, and your emphasis on process. So how else does that play out in your investing in mobile homes? Well, I have a process for acquisitions. I have a process for due diligence. I have a process for closing. I have a process to find a manager. I have a process to uh, to collect rents, um, and a process to stabilize and season and optimize, and a process for uh, refinancing. So I have multiple processes throughout the life cycle of a deal um, to optimize every single step because there are multiple steps to real estate. It's not just buying it and selling it. You know that's 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 the big picture. But the devil is in the details. So if you if you have good processes for each step of the way, you're you're going to make a lot more money and have a lot less pain in the ass and a lot more freedom, you know, to to live. I have, uh, you know, I I, I work very hard because I love it, uh, and I don't really call it work. It's more like play. I, I find this like a game. And um, but you know, it's if if I didn't have it processed or itemized or or uh, you know something that was fault that was uh, sort of a step by step. I go bananas because I have massive ADHD, and if I'm not if I you know I'm all over the place all the time. And if I don't have something that keeps me grounded and uh, pointed in the right direction, I'm 100% going to hit walls and be frustrated because I was broke for a long time in real estate because I didn't have processes in place. 
And uh, once once I started creating those, um, made a lot more money and had a lot more fun in my life. Yeah, it's it's important to note that the processes help you stay on task, uh, especially yes. since you have ADHD. And I know how difficult it can be to stay on task yep. uh, when you have ADHD. So uh, uh, processes are definitely important. Tell tell us why Marco people should come hear you speak at the annual conference. Uh, I can tell you why not to hear me speak. Um, if you want to not make any passive income, uh, if you want to uh, work, uh, you know, keep your job and uh, retire in 25 or 30 years, then please don't come hear me speak. But if you want to uh, learn how to buy, uh, you know, some fantastic asset classes like mobile homes, uh, parks, uh, use as little of your own money as possible, and uh, have a lot of fun doing it, following processes. And really, just having a blast um, helping people want to sell these these properties. People want to sell them for whatever reason. Um, most cases, it's age. Specific. Most people that have a mobile home park do not want to sell it because it's a cash cow. And uh, if you're um, getting on in years, uh, and you are uh, in a position where you no longer need cash flow, but you need cash, um, then you know there's some opportunities there for you to scoop up these uh, these great assets for pennies on the dollar because that's to me the secret to buying to making money in real estate is to buy it right and to manage it well because if you buy it right and manage it well you're going to do well um, I know a lot of people that overpay for property and don't have good management and wonder why they're not making money in real estate uh, if the money's costing you five and you're you're buying five or six caps or seven caps. Or the money's costing you three, and you're buying a you know low low return property. There's no margin there for you to screw up at all. So I'm buying 15 caps because we're at least I'm passing on tens all the time, uh, and we create 15 caps through the processes that I have. So you're buying extremely high return property because 15% returns. You, I, I'm sure you understand the apartment building business is very difficult to do and find. It doesn't you know it's most people have never seen one in their lives. Um, uh, but we create extremely high return property, and I mean real. That's including management, taxes, insurance, and you know someone skins their knee, the expenses in there. So all real expenses. Uh, try to make as much, uh, get the best deal you can, and then um, you know manage it right. You're going to do really well. So if that's what you want to learn, come on down, come come see us, and I know you're going to have a blast uh, listening to me. I'm, I generally am a lot of fun. Today I'm not so much, but usually I am. <laughs> No, well, this has definitely been fun, Marco, and, and I'm looking forward to hearing you, you speak. Uh, you're going to be at the Michigan Landlord and Real Estate Investor Free Conference and Expo. Uh, it's happening in Grand Rapids, Michigan, February 21st through 23rd of 2019. You can go to rpoaonline.org to get more information. Um, and to register for free. It is a free conference. Marco, I, I, I know you're, uh, you're in the middle of doing a lot of deals. What'd you say, $40 million this month? Yes, uh, the, all hotels though. I, uh, my, my bread and butter right now is, is hotels, yeah. It's, uh, it's a $4 million a month, $4 million a year. This, this month alone, we've added $4 million a year of passive income to our portfolio. Wow, fantastic! So, yep. so that's great. I appreciate you pulling over to the side of the road to do this uh, this uh, conversation for the podcast, um, and I'm really looking forward to hearing you come speak about mobile home park investing. So, thank you so much for being on the show. Pleasure, pleasure, Brian. Look forward to seeing you as well. This episode was sponsored by Green Property Management, managing everything from single-family homes to apartment complexes in the West Michigan area. Find out more at greenpropertymgt.com. And Mike Murphy at J.B. Harrison Insurance, helping real estate investors to understand and choose their best options for all their insurance needs. Call 616-868-0050 or email mikem at jbhins.com. You've been listening to the Rental Property Owner and Real Estate Investor Podcast, brought to you by the Rental Property Owner Association. You can find out more at rpoaonline.org. If you enjoyed this podcast, please go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review.